We've all heard the rumors. We all know that Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, had a baby when she was only 12 years old. She followed that up by having another one at 14. Her father was C.L. Franklin. C.L. was a pastor famous for his fiery speeches from the pulpit and for his singing and for his womanizing. C.L. was known for messing with preteen girls because his desire for young girls had turned towards his own young daughter. In other words, was Aretha Franklin's daddy also her baby daddy? Let's start by taking a look at C.L.'s life before Aretha was born. C.L. was born Clarence LaVon Walker on January 22, 1915 in Mississippi. His father disappeared when he was four, so he was raised solely by his mother Rachel. His mother at one point married a man named Henry Franklin, so C.L.'s surname changed from Walker to Franklin. Rachel, C.L.'s mother, worshipped him and her whole world revolved around him. This would continue as he became an adult, which would become an issue later on. By the time he was 19, CL had married Aline Gaines. That didn't last long, because by 21 he had divorced her and married Barbara Siggers. Siggers already had a young son named Vaughn from a previous relationship. When CL was 23, Barbara gave birth to a daughter, Irma. Two years later, a son, Cecil, was born in 1940. That same year, CL had a baby with a completely different female, Mildred Jennings. We can't call her a woman because she was only 12 years old. The 12-year-old girl had a daughter for CL. Mildred was a member of CL's congregation, and reports indicate that CL preyed on other preteen girls in his church as well. This outside baby was hidden from CL's other children for 18 years until he decided he wanted to reveal it to them. Aretha, named after CL's two sisters, was born on March 25, 1942 to CL and Barbara. In 1944, another daughter, Carolyn Ann, was born. Around this time, CL began to gain popularity for his preaching. He was an inspiration to legendary musicians such as B.B. King and Bobby Blue Bland. And he was also a mentor to the Reverend Jesse Jackson. C.L. was a ladies man, so his popularity gave him lots of women to choose from. Many of the women in his church were after him, and C.L. took as many of them up on what they were offering as he could. In the meantime, his relationship with his wife Barbara was stormy. She was aware of C.L.'s cheating, while C.L. wasn't a one-woman man, his wife was a one-man woman. In 1948, Barbara took her son Vaughn and moved back to Buffalo, New York. She left all the children she had with C.L. with C.L. No definitive reason was given for her leaving. Some have speculated that C.L. made her leave, while others said that Barbara longed to be independent and away from C.L.'s controlling nature. Whatever the case, C.L. told her that she was free to leave and take her son, but none of the children that were C.L.'s were going with her. Buffalo was only about 200 miles away from Detroit, so the kids would visit Barbara as much as they could. Despite this, six-year-old Aretha was heartbroken by her mother's leaving, as she was very close to her. Aretha was very withdrawn and shy. While she loved visiting her mother and would have loved to live with her, C.L. made it clear that that wasn't an option. Tragically, Aretha's mother died of a heart attack when Aretha was only nine. Aretha wouldn't speak a word for weeks afterward. An already introverted Aretha became more so after her mother's death. In her mother's place, Big Mama, C.L.'s mother, and various women from the church were more than willing to look after the children. Of course, Many of those church women were angling to hook up with CL. A couple of women would play major roles in Aretha's life. One was a woman named Lola Moore, who all the children grew close to. She was like a second mother to them. And for a while it seemed like CL might marry her, but it never happened. She eventually left CL 
and according to her siblings, Aretha was so devastated she had come out of her room for days. Aretha was still mourning the loss of her mother and didn't want to lose this mother figure. As a result, she begged her brother Cecil to plead the kid's case to CL and tell him how much they needed Lola, but Cecil wouldn't do it. He was too fearful of his father to do so. Reflecting on this time, Aretha's sister Carolyn said, quote, every little girl needs a mother, unquote, and that even though Big Mama was there, CL was elevated above the children. This is the problem with CL's mother that we referred to earlier. She was focused on her grown son's well-being and doing for him, always putting him ahead of his own small children who still needed to be raised and taught. Carolyn also said that all the children desperately needed a woman to hold them and call them her babies. While no definitive reason was given for Lola's departure, Carolyn suspects it's because CL had started a relationship with Clara Ward. Clara was a popular gospel singer. When most people think of gospel singers from this era, Mahalia Jackson is a popular name that comes to mind. In fact, Jackson was a mentor of Ward's. However, Clara was no Mahalia, at least not when it came to her behavior. While Mahalia reserved her singing strictly for churches and religious ceremonies, Clara often performed in secular clubs as well as churches. The Reverend James Cleveland later referred to CL and Clara as the Ike and Tina Turner of the church. This comparison wasn't just because they were popular entertainers. CL was abusive toward Clara, as no less than B.B. King says he once saw CL quote, haul off and wipe her so hard across the face she fell to her knees, unquote. B.B. says he was too shocked to say anything. The Reverend James Cleveland says he saw CL brutalize Clara on several occasions and that Clara was surprisingly passive about it. The time she did get mad, he says, CL would send flowers and candy and they'd start up all over again. While Clara wasn't necessarily a role model for Aretha when it came to being a woman, she most definitely was one as an entertainer. CL would often have parties at his home with famous people such as Sam Cooke, Nat King Cole, and Dinah Washington attending. At these events, Clara would play the piano. A young Aretha would sit in awe at the top of the stairs, watching Clara skillfully play and sing for the entertainment of all the guests. Aretha would study Clara playing and then imitate her playing note by note. She got so good at it that CL would often wake Aretha up to come and play the song called After Hours on the piano. Didn't matter if it was 3 or 4 a.m., he would still do it for the entertainment of his guests. Performing was the one place where Aretha's insecurities and self-doubt disappeared. She was confident in both her singing and piano playing. CL felt that she was good enough to start touring with him on the gospel circuit. Of course, CL was looking out for number one, thinking that Aretha could increase the number of tour dates he had. While CL the moneymaker was winning with this arrangement, preteen Aretha was thrust into adulthood well before she would actually become one. Speaking of the gospel circuit, Ray Charles and Billy Preston both called the gospel circuit in the 1950s the sex circus. Why? Ray says that gospel guys were wilder sexually than himself, which in his words was saying something. Ray liked orgies, but he preferred to be the only cat in the room with two or three chicks. He says the gospel people didn't think that way. In his words, the cats liked it with the cats, and the chicks liked it with the chicks, and nobody minded mixing it up this way or that. Ray went on to say that while some claimed that ministers in the churches weren't aware of these goings on, more than once he'd seen ministers at these parties that wanted a piece of the action. Billy Preston would say that it wasn't the R&B crowd that turned him out. It was the church crowd, where the vibe was wide open and was anything goes, men on men, women on women. While outside the church gay men were called sissies, inside the church a lot of music was created by gay men. James Cleveland was gay. Preston claimed that even Mahalia Jackson surrounded herself with gay men her entire life. This is what Aretha entered into when she began touring with her father. He put her out of school at 11 years old to best allow her to use and nurture her musical talent. At least that's how he'd explain it. Others would say he exploited Aretha. 
She became part of what she later called a traveling religious service to earn additional income by soliciting love offerings or money and selling records of CL sermons. Aretha was happy to skip school and she was never passionate about it. At that point in her life, she was anxious to become a woman. While Aretha was reluctant to talk about her first pregnancy, according to Etta James, her and Aretha were similar in their exposure to life on the road. Etta says that she can understand why Aretha didn't want to talk about the sexual part of the gospel circuit. Quote, who wants to admit that you're praising the Lord at the 8 p.m. service and servicing some drop-dead gorgeous hunk of a singer an hour later? Both Aretha and I started out before we were teenagers. We were out of our homes for the first time, and we wanted to experience it all. I wouldn't use the expression sexually active. I'd say sexually overactive. We couldn't wait to give it up, because that's what it meant to be grown. Aretha was as anxious as anyone. I know for a fact that Aretha gave it up often and easily. In that respect, she was like most young singers out there. Unquote. Etta went on to say, quote, I didn't go through the usual growing up stages. One day I was a child and the next day a grown woman. It was strange and it no doubt effed me up. I'm sure it effed Aretha up too. We were thrown into a world of too much excitement where we were overstimulated way too soon. Unquote. James Cleveland said, quote, Aretha was a mess, unquote, and claims that CL tried his best to rein her in, but that she was flirtatious and that she imitated CL's behavior. Once, when Aretha was 12 and Sam Cooke was 23, she went to his hotel room in Atlanta. When CL learned about this, he went looking for her and banged on Sam's door. He saw the staple singers and asked them whether Aretha was with Sam. They played dumb and said they weren't aware of where she was. Aretha later claimed nothing happened. However, in another instance, she visited Sam in his room in New York and insisted their relationship was platonic. Now, who would dispute this? No less than Johnny Taylor, the famous singer. Quote, that's not what Sam told me. He said, Sam said that he enjoyed a lot more than Aretha's voice, unquote. Johnny also said that Sam didn't need to tell him that because he'd already seen Aretha get down before in different cities on the gospel circuit. Quote, she looked to be very shy and didn't talk all that much. And when it came to partying, she was ready to go, unquote. Irma, Aretha's sister, tried to give CL an out saying how busy he was on the circuit, preparing for services, giving interviews to newspapers and radio stations, in addition to doing lots of reading. All that made it nearly impossible for him to keep up with and keep track of two precocious daughters. Aretha's sister Carolyn spoke about how Irma and Aretha often fought over the same men. In particular, there was one time that Aretha was certain a guy had a crush on her, while Irma felt that Aretha was trying to steal that same guy from her. Now, in the middle of all this debauchery, young Aretha got pregnant twice and had two children before she was 15 years old. What was CL's reaction to these pregnancies? On the first one, Brother Cecil says he thought CL would explode, but he didn't. Quote, he understood that these things happened. He did, however, call us all together to discuss the consequences of having kids at a young age. Unquote. Okay, hold on for a minute. Let's set the scene again for what we're talking about here. We've all been children, so we all know that one of the worst things you could have ever done to your parents as a child was to embarrass them publicly. In Aretha's case, her father was a well-known reverend, and his daughter not only gets pregnant, she also is barely 12 years old when she does. And remember, this is in the 1950s when girls who were pregnant out of wedlock were sent out of town to a relative's house to avoid the stigma of having that baby around people who knew her. CL was also known as a man to have a fiery temper and was known to put hands on women. And his reaction to his 12 year old getting pregnant was, quote, to understand that these things happen, unquote. Not saying anything, just an observation. We had to put that in there because we know that some of you were thinking the same thing. 
Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. We left off where CL was giving his children a fatherly talk about avoiding the consequences of having a child at a young age. Sound advice. But if that conversation actually took place, apparently Aretha wasn't listening because she popped up pregnant again a little over a year later. Now, what was CL's reaction to yet another pregnancy to an unwed girl who's barely old enough to go to high school? His reaction to her second pregnancy? According to Aretha, it was, quote, one of complete acceptance, unquote, and he wasn't upset and didn't scold her. Not only didn't CL get mad, he also let Aretha drop out of school for good. And it's not like he did it so she could stay at home with her children. Big Mama would take care of raising the boys for her. Aretha dropped out of school after the second childbirth as CL didn't want to stop doing his out-of-town services with Aretha as the main attraction. He told Aretha she could resume her formal education at a later time, which never happened. This is interesting because his older daughter Irma was ready to quit school and go on tour and she would have been a pioneer in the field of girl groups. She would have predated the Chantels and the Shirelles, but CL wanted her to focus on her education in high school and beyond. Why the different attitudes towards the daughter? Again, just an observation. Now, let's directly address the question that was initially asked. Who is the father of Aretha Franklin's first child? For years, Aretha didn't like to discuss the subject of the pregnancies in interviews. Aretha refused to name the father of her first baby, referring to him as Romeo. Her second baby daddy was named by Aretha as Casanova. Her second baby was born just shy of her 15th birthday. She only committed to saying that the baby was named after the father, Eddie. Here are the known suspects for who could possibly be Aretha's baby daddy. First, we have her father, C.L. Franklin. He was known to prey on young girls in his own church congregation. He was also known as a man with a large sexual appetite, who also put his wants above anything else. Could he possibly have had sex with his own daughter? Next, we have a man named Edward Jordan. A handwritten will from Aretha that was found in 2019 revealed that her first two children were both fathered by Jordan. Reports indicate that Jordan would have been 22 when he got Aretha pregnant the first time. Can or should we believe a document that didn't service until Aretha had passed? A third suspect is Donald Burke. Not much is known about him, but according to cousin Brenda, he was the father of Aretha's first baby. Quote, he was just a guy Reed knew from school, said Cecil, using the nickname that they often called Aretha. She wasn't all that interested in him, and I don't think he had any deep interest in her." Unquote. As another option, could it be someone else besides one of these men who was the baby's father? Remember, according to various sources, Aretha was wild and promiscuous as a young girl. While we're on the subject of Aretha's behavior, we have to directly address C.L. Franklin and his behavior as a father. Even if he isn't the baby's father, he failed Aretha in numerous ways as a man who was supposed to be her protector against the world. In fact, he practically threw her into that world, taking her out of elementary school to perform with him on his gospel tours. You've heard us discuss how these tours were in many cases a series of sex circuses, according to people who participated in them. Sion introduced his daughter to all of this, all in the name of chasing fame and making another dollar. No responsible and caring father would do that. Now, regarding the identity of the baby's father, honestly, other than the will that was found, no real evidence is known that tells us who the father of Aretha's first child is. However, we're all intelligent people. Think about all the information we've covered and discussed. What makes sense and what seems plausible? The common answer is that CL was the baby's father. However, despite the rumors, there's never been any proof to support this. If that will that we discussed is to be believed, then we've been looking at the wrong man all along. We hope you enjoyed this dive into the long hill rumor that Aretha Franklin's father was also her baby daddy. This one was a longer one than what we normally do, 
but there was just so much information some stuff it had to be left out simply for the sake of trying to tie it together to where it made sense and it didn't go any longer than it already did but for those of you that hung until the end we appreciate you we thank you for listening if you like this video please continue to come back to our channel like and subscribe share it with your friends thank you again and see you soon